You're listening to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, episode 128. Well, first and foremost, there there is no work-life balance, right? There's only life, right? We have one life to live. And your work's job is to support that life that you live. And it's important, but it is not in, in an equal space or that than your life, right? Like here, there is just a life and work is a supportive mechanism to that life. Mid-career is often described as your career and wealth building years. You are supposed to work hard, right? And when you work hard, you don't get much time for anything else. Wrong. Today's conversation will blow the lid off of what many people think about work-life balance and what it means to them and their careers. I want this episode to challenge you about how you approach things in your career and why you do them. Today, you will meet Marianne Lombardi. Marianne is an entrepreneur and executive coach, author, and mom. She has spent 25 years working with cities, organizations, and entrepreneurs, building policies, programs, and resources to grow the creative workforce and help entrepreneurs thrive. She now channels that expertise and insight into helping women and non-binary entrepreneurs ditch the work-life balance battle, take bold action, and build a profitable business that aligns with the life they want to live, creating independence and wealth in the process. She is the single parent of the coolest teenager on the planet. She believes tacos are their own food group, wine is best when it's Spanish and shared, and that it is time for a power shift in business. In this episode, Marianne and I talk about why all mid-career professionals must lean into their agency, their power of choice, why setting boundaries is essential to your career success, why work-life balance is a myth, the difference between choice and obligation, and why taking care of yourself needs to stop being an afterthought. This is the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, and I'm your host, John Narrell. I help mid-career professionals who feel stuck, undervalued, and underutilized show up to find a job they love or love the job they have using my proven four-step formula. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS. Let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. Before we get to today's conversation, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new resource I have available to help you with your interview preparation. It's called 26 Sentence Starters to Help You Answer Any Interview Question. This guide will help you calm your nerves, tell your story from a better place of value and service that gets hiring managers more interested in who you are and what you do, and formulates your answers more clearly so your points are communicated better. Check the show notes or visit johnnarrell.com for more details, and let me help you with your interview preparation today. If you don't follow Marianne Lombardi on LinkedIn or Instagram, I hope you will give her a like or a follow after this episode. She doesn't hold anything back. She is a formidable force in the business space and pushes back on the notion that we all need work-life balance. My dear friend and coach colleague, Susan Kovacs, introduced me to Marianne as someone she thought could add a lot of value to the podcast, and she was right. This is why we network. Talking with Marianne, I appreciated her perspective and insight on many issues mid-career professionals face, especially when it comes to the idea of setting ground rules for how we show up in our careers. You'll have a lot of ahas from today's episode. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Marianne Lombardi. My name is Marianne Lombardi. I am the founder and CEO of Marianne Lombardi Coaching, where I work with women and non-binary entrepreneurs, really helping them ditch the work-life balance lie and uh, build a profitable business that is in alignment with the lives that they choose to live. So I have spent about 20 plus years uh, working with uh, uh, cities, institutions, and communities to build policies, programs, and resources that help entrepreneurs thrive and have really channeled that into uh, this coaching firm. 
I'm very happy that we've connected and we've had several conversations leading up to today. You know that I like letting my listeners in a little bit more about you. So one of the favorite questions is, what did you want to be growing up? Yeah, I wanted to be free. Mm. You know, I, I... I mean, I was a, I was creative and and an artist and I love music and all that kind of stuff. But when I think back to what I wanted, I, I didn't really have this, oh my God, I want to be X, but I always wanted to feel free, right? Like I always wanted to feel like I could just go be independent and free and do whatever I wanted to do. So that was kind of that guiding force for me when I was young. How much does that desire for you to be free fuel the work that you do today? Oh, I, I think it's a it's it's sort of like a core to uh, everything I do. This constant question for myself about, you know, how much independence do I have? How much agency and ownership do I have over, you know, what I want and who I want to be and the kind of uh, world I want to live in and the kind of support I want to give my family and my child, right? So I think there is, there's always this question in my mind about um, um, the kind of independence I can have if I don't have it and how do I find it? What's been the biggest lesson for you in terms of finding that freedom and truly holding on to it? Yeah, well, I think that um I think the biggest lesson is that it it matters, right? Because I think that we can um sort of get lost in the day-to-day -day of our life, of our work, of uh, the conditioning that we have grown up in or the uh, you know, societal pressures that we are under and um it's easy to get lost in that idea that um, we aren't free and we can't be free because we have so much to do and we have a lot of responsibilities and all of these kind of things. But um, I, I think that the most important thing to recognize is that we have more agency and ownership than we think we do. We actually have some control over um, our choices, over who we want to be and what we want to do in the world. And, and I think it's important to remember that, right? Like it's important to remember that your independence matters. Marianne, to norm the conversation for people who are listening where they may not be as familiar with hearing the phrase, you have agency, how would you define that for someone? Choice, right? Like, choice really it's about you you have you have the ability you have the control to to make choices to change you know and so when you when you have agency over something you have the ability to um affect that thing right like to make a choice to change or even to make a choice to not change right like like no choice is actually a choice at the same time right so that's what really agency means is understanding that you know you have you don't have control over everything, right? Like we only have control over certain things that we have agency over, but we should use the control that we actually do have to do what's best for our lives, what's best for our communities, what's best for our families. There are many mid-career professionals who are listening that have some struggles with understanding what their choices are. Think of the person who wakes up in the morning and their thought is, I have to go to work versus I get to go to work. We've all had these mid-career moments. And if anybody listening hasn't, it's coming. <laughs> it, is, it is coming. It will happen to you soon. Trust me. Right. Give it a but, minute. Just give oh, it a minute. And it's, it's coming down the pike. <laughs> it's that moment that truly transforms our career path, our decisions in how we choose to move forward. Leading up to our conversation, there was something you put in the in the pre-interview form, if you will, that I, I wanted to talk to you about. And, and it's this notion about having a call with your boss about needing to take your phone into the bathroom. Oh, yes. <laughs> so can, you, can you share with us, please? Yeah. Well, so uh, 
I, I can imagine that many of your your listeners have had experiences around boundaries, right? About, um, you know, when, when can you have time to yourself? And one of my boundaries is that I, I just don't take the phone into the bathroom. Right. And I accepted in in uh, one of my previous gigs that I did need to be accessible. I had to have the phone on me. I had to respond. And, you know, I, I accepted that. But what I did not accept is that I will not take the phone in the bathroom. So I I had a, a very like awkward and sort of surreal conversation once with his boss about how since I missed two phone calls from this person um, and a uh, I'm pretty blunt. And I said, well, I was in the bathroom, right? Like, that's so why I, I missed the conversation at the call. And and this individual started to, in essence, say, well, one, they didn't believe me. Two, that, well, I should have picked up the phone anyway. And we proceeded to have what was like a seven minute conversation about like <laughs> why I should have taken the phone into the bathroom because I have to be accessible all the time. And I and I was sitting there going, I, I can't believe that this is happening. And at one point towards the end of it, I said, I think we need to stop this conversation because I'm going to start saying things that are pretty inappropriate for me to say, you know, with the relationship that we have. So we need to move on. But it was one of those, you know, straw camel moments where I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I just don't want to ever have this conversation. I shouldn't have to have this conversation. Thank you for sharing that. And you and I share similar experiences. So I I had worked for an agency where when they, uh, I'm going to date myself here, when they handed me my BlackBerry and they said, you will have this 24 seven. And I handed it back to them and said, no, I will not. Hmm. And there was this moment they said, well, no. And I go, I will answer it up until 10 o'clock at night. I will answer it after six o'clock in the morning. You do not get me when I'm trying to sleep at night. You just don't. And again, to your point, it was this kind of straw camel kind of moment. Well, fast forward to a different branch of that agency. I was working with someone who, I'm going to use the word lamented because it's just the best verb I can find at this point. But they lamented to me that they were on their phone in church on Christmas Eve. Oh no. Handling a crisis and this person said to me, "Does that make me a bad person because I was on my phone in church during Christmas Eve service?" And I said, "It's not my place to judge. I would offer that you will need to take a look at some of the boundaries you set at work." Whether or not it was appropriate for you to be on your phone during Christmas Eve service, that you'll have to take up with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and in that story, the thing that I think is interesting is the question was, uh, am I a bad person? And the answer to that is no, you're not a bad person. Right. You you are, you are in a, a, a situation where, like you're saying, there's some boundary challenges, plus the expectations of your work environment are intense in the way they are. And maybe it was a real crisis and you needed to be on the phone, who knows. But um, but I do think that there is this judgment that we place on ourselves immediately saying that, you know, am I a bad person? No, you are not a bad person, that you're in this situation. But but it may indicate that some changes need to be made. And and I think the phone is such a is such a wonderful um example of this because I, I when I when I left my my last full-time gig just the ability to turn my phone off or leave it on do not disturb for an entire day or take a walk with my kid without bringing it there was it was liberating i mean it was just liberating so that that goes back to the freedom for me right like the tether got i got to break that tether so i could feel free and sometimes those freedoms are small right like sometimes it's just about being able to leave the house without the phone but it was just liberating so i think those are the kind of feelings that i have always looked for is like how can i be ambitious get things done really have uh you know great impact but at the same point in time feel free to do those things giving ourselves permission to do those things to your point absolutely liberating without question it's something which if if anyone's listening and they 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 can take that as a takeaway from today is just giving yourself permission or to to our point earlier about having that agency to make that choice to say look i'm going to detach for 15 30 60 minutes yeah. and it'll be there when i get back 
Right. It, it, and it'll be okay, right? Like yes. the world will not end and it it will be okay. And permission is such an interesting, uh, interesting space to sit in because it, it's amazing how much we ask other people to give us permission for our choices, the way we want to live our lives, whether we can go have a vacation, whether, and I, I really wanted to not have to do that, right? Like I didn't want to have to, to get somebody to approve me going to visit my family if, if I needed to, right? I have aging parents. I've got a kid who's getting into college or was getting into college. Now they're in college. So I'm an empty nester. So, okay, that's a whole new thing. But, um, but still like the, I just felt, didn't feel like I wanted to have to ask permission to live my life. And it brings us to truly what is going to be the crux of this conversation is the whole notion about why work-life balance is a myth. Mm, Yeah. And I'd love for you to start this part of the conversation off by just sharing with us why you know work-life balance is a myth. Yeah. Well, well, first and foremost, there there is no work life balance, right? There's only life, right? We have one life to live. And your work's job is to support that life that you live. And it's important, but it is not in in an equal space or that than your life, right? Like here there is just a life and work is a supportive mechanism to that life. The other challenge with this is that you know, work, the, the term work life balance sort of started as this work leisure balance. And the idea was that in the workforce, that primarily men who were in the workforce at the time were meant to go spend some leisure time. It was meant to be this like work leisure thing. But the challenge with this is that for women, your labor is never over, right? So you you have your work hours that you get paid. Then you go home and you have your unpaid work hours. And then you also have a night shift and then you have a care shift if you've got kids and then you've got, you know, aging parents or whatever it is or dogs or whatever. Right. Like like women's work is never done. And so there is no way to turn off labor and have leisure. Right. Like it just doesn't work that way. So so what matters instead of trying to find balance is trying to live a life based on what do you actually want. Right. And then structuring your work and your life responsibilities and all of those kind of things in alignment with what it is you want. Because yes, sometimes you may spend more hours at a job and sometimes you're going to spend less hours because there are seasons of your life that you're going through, but it all should be pointing towards what do you want? Like with this one precious life that you have, how do you want to spend it? Where do you want to spend it? How do you want to feel when you're spending it? Who do you want to be with? What kind of business or job or career or work do you want to be doing to support that thing that you want? So so I, I try to work at least with my clients for us to really get out of this conversation around I'm trying to find more work-life balance because it, it just isn't that thing, right? Like it's just not possible. So it's much more effective to think about what what is it you want? How do you get what you want? What do you find is the biggest obstacle or block that holds people back around this notion? Well, I mean, I think, I think there's a, there's a lot of either self-limiting beliefs. I think there is this sense that I, I I can't, it's too much, right. You know, because it, it seems insurmountable, you know, change seems insurmountable, but it isn't when you just take it one step at a time. It's not about blowing up your entire life or that kind of thing, but it is about starting to think more actively about, am I living a life of choice? Because often we are living a life that is based on societal expectations, circumstances, you know, what your fifth grade teacher told you you were good at, what your parents told you you should do, you know, what your college counselor said, oh, hey, here's what you can do because you can get a job in this, right? Like all of those things sort of propel people into doing things that may not really be of their choice. So I think what's most important in starting this kind of stuff is to think about, okay, what am I doing right now that's by choice? And what is it just by habit, right? Or by, you know, somebody telling me I should do that or I'm good at that, that kind of thing, right? And once you start getting in touch 
with sort of what is your choice and what is not your choice, it's easier to start thinking about like, okay, well, what do I want? And what little changes can I make in my life to lead me closer to that what I want? That's the goal. The goal is not to, to make a hundred things happen at once because nobody can do that and mm -hmm. it's overwhelming. But it really is about doing one thing at a time and just looking at it one moment, one element at a time. I'm just gonna let that sit for a moment. Because as I'm listening to you, there's about five questions that have popped in my head that are not on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which well, bring is, them on, John. Let's absolutely. go. Absolutely. It, it, it's great when it happens. We can. Right. You talk about choice. And when I think of choice, and I think about the, the people I work with who, typically very strong, dominant, heart-centered leaders and professionals who give and give and give to everyone else first before they give to themselves. That choice oftentimes is overruled by what they believe to be their sense of obligation. To your point earlier, a woman's work is never done right? There's, they're always in that labor mode of everything that they do. What can you offer in terms of helping shift the construct of that choice is where the power is, even when there is that strong sense of obligation? Yeah. Well, I, I think there's two things I would say. Obviously, there are things in our life that happen or that we have to manage or deal with that were not our choice, right? I'm not suggesting that everything in our life is is our choice, right? Some things sure. do happen to us or for us, depending how you look at that, and uh, and we have to navigate and manage them. But the question I have for the individuals that you describe there, the is less an answer and it's more a question, which is what happened if you, what would happen if you stopped? Mm. Right? Because sometimes I wonder with folks who are that, that driven to continue caring beyond you know, beyond the the mark, right? Like who just keep going and going and going and going, that urgency or that obligation, that feeling of obligation is coming from somewhere. And it's probably coming from somewhere pretty deep, you know? And, and, and so I would just love to have a conversation with them about what would happen if you stopped, you know? I, I think about even in terms of, just my own life and my own experiences, you know, part of, part of what came up for me, especially as I was dealing with an aging parent who suffered from Alzheimer's and being 250 miles away and handling the phone calls and, and the visits on a monthly basis and never knowing what you're going to get when you pick up the phone, right? That, that sense of obligation in looking at that phone and seeing the caller ID and seeing mom on the caller ID and going, how do I not answer it? Because if I don't answer it now, what if? And the, the thought of, you know, well, what happens if I, um, you know, what would happen if I chose differently? Well, the likelihood is I'll catch my mom later. You know, we'll, we'll talk later kind of a thing. The, the story we tell, particularly for me at the time, the story I was telling in my mind was drop everything. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's interesting to hear you, you frame it in this way that that is truly helpful because I think about my own journey. I think about a lot of the journey of, of, of the people I work with, the people who I deal with and, and help, you know, it, it is that I have to give, I have to go, I have to support, I have to do. And taking care of ourselves is the afterthought. 
Yeah, well, and I think you you hit a very important point, which is the story that you're telling yourself, right? Like, because those stories are crazy powerful. And if in your head, the story is, well, if I don't pick up the phone, all of these terrible things will happen. You know, I will miss this. It'll be the last time I ever speak with all of, right? Like those stories are just like consuming your head. I mean, this came up with me with preparing for empty nest land, right? Mm -hmm. Because I had all these stories in my head about how my life is over. I've spent, you know, all of this time as a single parent with my kid, 14 years, primary caregiver. It's been amazing. Like I've loved being a single parent and that's a conversation for another day, but, but it's just been, I have this beautiful relationship with my child. We have a lot of fun together. They're going to leave me. My life is over, right? Like I'm never going to see them. I'm never going to have fun again and blah, blah, blah. So, but that's not what happened, (laughs) right? Like I, I'm actually okay, and and they're doing good at college, and I talk to them, you know, every day or so, and and it's good, and I have a clean bathroom now, and <laughs> I just am not doing eight loads of laundry a day, and like the there's little things that are coming from it that, and I have space in my brain and my body in ways that are new that I never had anticipated, right? Like this idea that maybe the answer is it'll be good. But I think we have a tendency to think that, oh, the terrible thing is going to happen, right? Like we're conditioned to go, oh, no, yes. shit, I got to prepare for the yep. terrible thing. But but what if it's good, you know? Right. So, yeah, the stories are powerful. It, w- without question. And a lot of the work or the work that you do today is primarily around women and non-binary entrepreneurs and helping them with their businesses and such. I'm curious though, when you think about the clients you work with, how are you helping them um, reset or reframe this dialogue so that as they run their business, as they're on their entrepreneurial journey, they are truly leaning into the power of their agency to craft and create whatever it is that they want for their business and their life. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And and one of the things that I always think is interesting about this is that I am first and foremost a business coach. But because that and, and I love the process of building businesses, I I I love the the nuts and bolts of it. I, I love the adventure of it. I just think it's so much fun to to help uh, uh women and non-binary entrepreneurs really like find their their space and their voice and their power in that. Okay. But to do that. And to do it in a way that's aligning with their life, we have to do some life coaching in there, right? Like, because we have to talk about what it is they want. So, so often while we're building a business, we're also really trying to make very clear that that the way this business is structured it suits them. Because so often what happens is people jump out of the corporate world or something like that because of burnout or toxic culture or these kind of things, or because they want some freedom, adventure, whatever. And then they jump into creating a business, but they build it the same way that that everybody else is building it. And so the next thing you know, they're they're feeling the exact same way they were feeling in, you know, their corporate space because they didn't think about, well, I only want to work 20 hours a week right? Or I want to have a mobile lifestyle, or I want to live in like a yurt in somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So I just, right, like they didn't really plan the business, the line of business, the revenue streams around what they want. So because we're talking all the time about how does this feed your purpose? Is this something you find fun that you could do? And in entrepreneurship, you have to take action, right? Like it's all about action. You can think and plan till the day is done, but if you never take action, you know, it's not a business. So, but so we're constantly up against the question of are you doing something you want? Are you taking action? What did you learn from that action you just took? Is this leading you to where you want to go? How does this feel? Can you sustain this? So there's these constant conversations going around. Who do you want to be? Is this is this suiting this business that we're building? How does this feel to you? Because if you're gonna if if you're gonna devote yourself to building a sustainable business, it's gotta feel good. And that doesn't mean it's not hard sometimes, and it doesn't mean that that conflict won't come up or whatever. But you gotta find a way to be engaged by it, right? Like and be excited about it, and and be nervous about it, and have all of those complicated feelings. So. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but I do think that that to do an aligned business with your life, you have to be constantly thinking about, yeah, is is this 
leading me towards those things I say I want. The thing that I take away from what you just shared that I absolutely believe is a golden nugget here is the component around how we take action. We can sit and theorize and think all day long about all the stuff we want to do. But if there is no action behind it, nothing comes to fruition. It's it's that all talk and no action component. And whether people call it the great resignation, the great reset, we're hearing a lot of stuff in the news right now about quietly quitting, whatever that is. And if you're sitting there and you're going, I'm going to launch my own business and it's going to be great and wonderful. I, I Yeah, I, I want that for you. But it is a hell of a lot of work, as we both know, to go ahead and make that lift. But when you are engaged and excited and driven and passionate and purposeful, it's easier. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And- so- and uh, sorry, I'll just also offer this too real quick. The same holds true for someone who's feeling stuck, undervalued, and underutilized in their job. Mm-hmm. If you want to get out of it, there is a path to go ahead and do that. But again, be purposeful, be intentional, be driven, take those action steps so you're not wallowing in the muck of being unhappy because you have the ability to choose whatever path's going to be next. Right. And you have that agency, right? Yes. Because you you can, in that business, try to find the levers that you can pull to see if you can make change at the place you are. And if the place you are is not um, capable of, of change, right? There's no way to do it. Then you can move somewhere else. And you don't have to start your business. I certainly want you to start a business, but you don't. You can move on to an, another job working for other people. But by trying to make that change where you are, you will discover more what you need from the new business, right? From the new place that you want to go to. So, so, but you have to take little actions one step at a time. And, and I, and I think that there is this false um, sense that if you just believe in yourself, everything will happen for you. Mm-hmm. And yes, there, there, there needs to be uh, an, you need to be thinking for yourself. You need to believe up to a point that things can happen. But what's more important is that you have to act and, and, if you wait to know or to believe, you will never do. And and I think that this there's this misconception that like confidence comes from believing in yourself, but that's actually not true. Confidence comes from taking action and and discovering through action success, right? And and then you take another action and you reassess what you just took an action and what the outcome is. So you take another action. And the next thing you know, you discover that when I take action, it leads to results. And that those results make me feel good, make me feel powerful, and make me feel confident in knowing that if I take an action, it will lead to results. And then the next thing you know, you start believing in yourself that your actions would lead to results, right? So so action is the power, you know, and belief often comes after action. Well said. There is nothing to add to that. We're going to leave it right there. That is brilliantly said. Thank you. Well, Marianne, we do need to start wrapping up here. And I knew this but conversation. But do we really, was, John? This is well, too much fun. I mean, I, I'm just I saying. Knew, I knew when we started this conversation, <laughs> I was going to look at the stopwatch on my phone and be like, we're at a half an hour already. Where did the Where did the time go? And I knew that was going to happen. So thank you. Absolutely. What advice would you give for someone to help them build their mid-career GPS? Uh, Well, first thing I would do is um, ask you to stop for a minute and just take an assessment of where you are, you know, because I I think most people, um, like you talk about, have a a lot of strong desire and ambitious and driven and running and moving and all of that kind of stuff and accomplishing, right? So I think it would be really beneficial to take a second, to take a pause and to stop and do a little audit, right? Be like, hmm, how do I feel? Do I like what I'm doing? How often? What's the cost of what I'm doing? Right? Like just take an audit for yourself and just stop for a minute and think about where you are and whether it serves your purpose. Because the questions are more important than the answers. So I think people just need to stop for a second and take an assessment. Great advice. 
Absolutely. There's, there's so much power in just taking that opportunity to pause. And that's something we don't hear a lot on this podcast. So thank you for offering that to everybody. Marianne, someone who's listening, who wants to learn more about you, they are thinking about starting a business. They want to work with you or connect with you in some way, shape or form. The mic is yours. Please share with them how they can do that and what else is coming up for you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the best way to get in touch with me is on LinkedIn, you know, Um, so please connect with me there. It's just my name, Marianne Lombardi. You can find me. Uh, Also, you can check out my website, which is MarianneLombardi.com. But really, I let's hop on a call, right? I mean, I think the the best way to figure out um, one, whether or not there's an opportunity to work together or whether or not there's opportunity to network and collaborate or find a new friend, right? Like that happens too. Um, Just hit me up on LinkedIn and, and let's hop on a call. I will make sure that all of that is in the show notes, but as one additional point for the listeners, when you go to Marianne's website, uh, it is Marianne without an E. So oh, MaryAnnLombardi.com. So for those of you who are driving and can't take notes or you are on the treadmill at the gym and listening to all of this, MaryAnnLombardi.com, no E, and you'll learn everything you need to know about her there and on LinkedIn. Marianne, thank you so very much for spending some time with us today talking about how to put more emphasis in our life with our work, because life doesn't stop. We talked about agency and we talked about setting those boundaries for us in our careers today, which was so helpful. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending some time. Oh, thank you for having me, John. All right, my friends. Again, thank you for listening to another wonderful episode. And remember, we build our mid-career GPS one mile or one step at a time and how we show up matters. Make it a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to miss an episode, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen. And I'd appreciate it if you would leave a rating and review. Visit johnnarrell.com to download your free copy of the 55-minute Career Transition Jumpstart to help you start building your mid-career GPS. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrell Coaching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.